Right. So we started 2016 uh, kind of in the middle of an El Nino uh, event. You know, we'd seen uh, very warm temperatures towards the end of 2015, and that continued. And we had like I think the largest anomaly on record was in February in 2016. Um, uh, and that persisted because the impacts of El Nino in the, in the global atmosphere last longer than the impacts of El Nino just locally in the, in the Pacific. So uh, what, you, uh, what you had is that even as the Pacific was cooling a little bit, uh, the temperatures in the rest of the world stayed very warm. And so uh, July, we estimated, was the warmest month uh, ever in an absolute sense in, uh, in that period of record since the 19th century and perhaps much, much longer. Um, uh, and as we've come to the end of this year, uh, that El Nino part of it has, has kind of faded, but we're also seeing very, very strong temperatures uh, in the Arctic region and very low, historically low sea ice in both poles, uh, which, is, which is unusual. Uh, and we don't think that that's directly related to the El Nino event. So it's a kind of independent thing which is going along uh, at the same time. And so that's combining uh, to, to produce, uh, you know, record warm anomalies, you know, pretty much for the entire year. Um, and when you add that up, you know, our estimates, you know, from uh, to, to, the, uh, to the end of November, so we haven't, we haven't done the, the calculation for the full annual uh, year yet, that will be announced next week. Uh, but until November, we had uh, an anomaly, that, that 12 month anomaly was about 0.2 uh, degrees C warmer than the previous warm year, which was 2015, which itself was, you know, 0.1 a bit warmer than the previous warm year, which had been 2014. So uh, this is a very unusual set of occurrences. I mean, we don't expect that every year is going to be a record year. I mean, like we've never had three years in a row like this, and we don't anticipate that 2017 uh, will be that warm because we're starting off uh, with less of an El Nino signal and more of a neutral La Nina signal, which has, which has a, as we said, a, a, a pretty large, though not exclusive, impact. Um, uh, but it is, uh, it does, it does make it clear that we're on a rising trend, and when we have you know, anomalously warm years on a rising trend, those are going to be record years. Uh, and so we have to build that in. Like if, you didn't, if you didn't build in the long-term trend, you wouldn't have expected 2016 to be anything special. It would have been a totally mid-range year for the, for the last 100 years, but it's not. And the reason why it's not, the, by about a degree, is because of the underlying uh, warming trend. Uh, and the, the impact that you get from an El Nino starting off at the beginning of the year you know, that's worth about, you know, an extra 0 0.1, 0 0.2 degrees, perhaps. Um, and so uh, we'll do that analysis uh, more uh, carefully um, over the next week. Uh, but uh, what you're looking at is, you know, so why we have a record year, you know, it's, it's 80 to 90 percent because of the long term trend and 10 percent because of uh, El Nino. So I, I, you know, I think it's totally human to care about round numbers and records. You know, I mean, uh, you know, why do we pay attention to our birthdays? You know, it's it's uh, uh, and then the big birthdays, right? Um, you know, I think it's just it's just a natural thing. Like we're kind of we're kind of tuned to that. Uh, so you know, twenty sixteen, you know, was also the year that we went through. 400 ppm for the last time, <laughs> um, and well, that you know that well, okay, that seems like an important thing, but you know the impacts of 399 and 401 are not really detectably different, um, and the uh, you know the difference between you know whether 2016 was the second warmest or the first warmest that doesn't make any difference to the impacts that we anticipate over time and it doesn't really make any difference to what we're predicting for the future. So in some sense they aren't important but in another sense they are because our birthdays, these records, these milestones are how we track what's going on because we're not very good at tracking things in a continual sense. Um, next year, I predict, 
uh, we won't see another record year. It'll be another warm year. It'll be a continuation of the uh, of the long term trends, and it won't be as exciting in the in the media. But you know, them's the breaks. Uh, the the weird thing is, like you know, I we don't want it to be another record year, right? You know, we wear two hats, right? As a scientist, we predict something, and we want that prediction to come true because that shows that we understand the system and that we were able to to wrestle some information and make a successful prediction, right? So I mean, I predicted uh, back in March that uh, that this year would be a record warm year. And wearing my scientist hat, I'm thinking, oh yes, good job. Wearing my citizen hat, I'm going, oh dear, <laughs> this is not what we want. Um, you know, and I, you know, I wrote a thing predicting what's going to happen in 2017. And again, if it happens, I'll be going, yes, but no. Uh, and, and so we find ourselves in this, in this odd bind 